Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day for everyone and for those who are watching this video my name is Muhammad Nazirul Naim bin Shaidan TF19017 and before I start this video I would like to to send my appreciation to my partner Amin Naif bin Zahuri TF19011 for preparing the slide and I will be your narrator for today's video and for today's video, we would like to talk about transformer protection devices. But before we moving on to to the protection devices, let us know what is a transformer. So, a transformer is actually an electrical devices that treat voltage for current in a circuit without affecting the total electrical power, which means the power will remain the same. This means it takes high voltage electricity with a small current and change it into a low voltage electricity with a large current or vice versa so by using the current induction principle we can turn the value of voltage which is from low voltage into a high voltage and a high voltage into a low voltage and so we're moving on to our second slide is the type of transformer these are the type of these are the transformer that we mainly saw mainly see in our power grid system, such as a power transformer and a distribution transformer. And there are two there are two working principles for the transformer, such as a step down transformer, which turn a high voltage into low voltage, and a step up transformer, which turn a low voltage into a high voltage. So, in our power grid system, the power transformer, as you can see on my cursor, which are mainly a step-up transformer, which change a low voltage value into a high voltage value, and the distribution transformer, which provide from high voltage into low voltage, which make it suitable to be used for domestical consumers. And let's take a look to our third slide. In our third slide, you can see this is a power transmission used in most countries including Malaysia um, as you can see in our slide that um, our electricity was generated at the power plant which origin to 12 kilovolts due to the voltage losses and energy losses due to heat during energy transmission the step up trans the step up transformer will be used to increase the voltage value from the power plant from 12 kV to 400 kV and the 400 kV will travel to to the power grid system through high voltage cable when it reach to a populated area the high voltage will be stepped down by a transformer which we are called substation then from the substation it will transfer into housing area or for domestic use and will be stepped down again by a distribution transformer which make it suitable for electrical appliance inside our house. Now we move on to our fourth slide. Um, transformer also have a nature of faults which mean a transformer could suffer minor damage or also into major damage but such damage could occur from a natural factor and human factor. Um, such natural factor could be from a lightning strike. A lightning strike came from the sky. Could it voltage value could reach to th thousand kilovolts and damage the transformer if if not install a proper protection devices. So to prevent such faults, we need to install several protection devices in and incorporated into the design and these are the transformer faults for example there are terminal faults winding faults incipient faults and overcurrent the faults can cause other problems such as overheating deterioration of insulation and also failure of transformer cooling system so this kind of fault could be major and also minor and what we want to avoid is fatal that could cause a technician life 
So this is the definition for the overcurrent. So for overcurrent, when the load is increased, the winding heats up and then cool down again. But as it happen, as, as it happen frequently, it decreases the um, it, it it decreases the lifespan for the transformer, which will take years to destroy a transformer eventually. For the incipient winding, incipient winding will cause mechanical stress to the transformer. This stress gradually affects the insulation system of the transformer. And there goes the winding faults, which occur occur to due to overwhelming stress caused by mechanical movement inside the transformer. Dielectric and thermal during induction process resulting to the incipient fault. And for our topic today, I would like to talk about an oil field transformer. An oil field transformer is what commonly used more in most country. Uh, oil field transformer were mainly used because of its simplicity and compact than the air cool based transformer. So an oil field transformer is it is it is actually was oil filled inside the shell. As you can see that the core is in the middle and then it was surrounded by the transformer oil which is a mineral based oil. So this kind of design even though it is efficient could not avoid from fault. Such fault could become fatal and costly for the government or the electrical company. So the transformer oil provide a cooling, a cooling ability, a thermal conductivity and chemical stability. But to ensure that the transformer oil uh, managed to provide a sustained protection, we need to ensure that the transformer oil temperature and the oil level was controlled and monitored. And this is a fault of oil field transformer. The use of oil inside the transformer are prone to fire incident due to overheated and the use of oil will cause a pressure build up due to oil heating up resulting from an explosion and also the oxidation of the oil causes degradation of the transformer core and to protect the transformer we use a buccal gas relay so what is actually do so buccal gas relay detects the oil level below that of the relay as a result of a leakage from a transformer tank so it could detect leakage inside the transformer it also can accumulate decomposes gas from oxidation such as co2 h2o which is exactly water and also carbon monoxide this gas could oxidate the transformer core if not funnel out from the oil tank so when the gas accumulate at a certain level, the buccal gas will trigger the alarm. And moving on to our second protection devices is a pressure relay. A constant heat up oil inside the, trans inside the transformer will cause a build up in pressure. So we need to monitor and detect the pressure. So this is what the pressure relays do. And by the time the gases and the pressure build up at a certain level, the pressure the pressure relay will detect and trigger the, the alarm system. And we're moving on to the oil level monitor devices. The oil level monitor devices is critical to monitor the maximum oil level alarm and also minimum oil level alarm. So if there's a leakage or due to the constant heat up of the oil causing the oil level to increase. So from the oil level monitor devices, which came also with having a thermometer to measure the top oil temperature inside the transformer. Once the, once the oil level monitor devices reaches several temperature and level, the, the devices will trigger up the fans or pump to force cooling and de-energize the transformer oil. And this is the winding thermometer. As you can see on my cursor, on the right, it is a liquid temperature which measure the temperature of the oil inside the transformer and the winding temperature it is important for us to know the exact temperature inside inside the transformer to avoid any catastrophic blow and in conclusion 
this is the fully designed incorporate with the protection devices on a commercially used transformer there's a fluid level there's a breather a transformer monitor a flow control and many more and so as we mentioned that it incorporate such protection devices to ensure that to avoid any catastrophic failure that could result in a shortage of electrical supply inside our nation and that's all from me i'm muhammad nazirun naim bin shahidan stay tuned assalamualaikum